I would put you at the front. I didn't hurt anybody during the robbery. <laughs> you, you did. It's her opinion. That's traumatizing. You probably gave someone PTSD. 100% I did. 100% I did. So what is that? How many people I mean, is that? I tied over 100 people. But the. Okay. Uh, go back. Just, just go back. Just go, the, just go back. Just, 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 listen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's too jacked. He's in the joint. Oh, you got a picture over here. Come on up. Uh, yeah. You. In between? Something about you. But so I think I there's go? a little violence there. You stay right there. <laughs> right put me about. I swear. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Get in here. I think the girl at the end is probably unsuspecting. You'd probably be over here a little bit more. I would put you towards that side because you don't look like you've done anything too crazy. Too crazy, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. She yeah. looks innocent. I'd come to you guys' side. <laughs> Quiet ones always did a lot of times, so you haven't said a word. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably in the right spot. I'm just thinking. I'm trying to think it's like a yeah. switch. Pops, come over here with me, Pops. Okay. Well, I'd right. agree with that. Something about it you that I'm, I'm puzzled about, you know, the tattoo, the way you talk. I'm not sure about you down there, you know. <laughs> you're going to move over here. All right. You want to switch wheels with me? Okay. Let me see those <laughs> tattoos. My tattoos? Yeah, let me see them. Mm -mm. Those are done on You're the street. This yeah. is present. Mm -hmm. over here, right? See, I'm over over here. Here. Those are right street here. tall guy with the hat. That's a drug charge. That, I, put that on, <laughs> I put that on least serious. Least if it was serious. I'm with you. That is <laughs> least. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's drugs. Who cares about them? Let's see, anybody did enough time to have face tattoos? Mm. I actually got a what face tattoo. <laughs> oh, wait. Right here. Oh, it's covered up. You're, covered You're cheating. Up. Sometimes, like, I'm telling you, there's that twerk. You're like a serial killer. Oh, you could have been. <laughs> could have been. It's just that killer. click, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, I, I would have a drink with you. I'm That's for sure. But you got to go up there right now. You get me a little nervous. Which that? Over, all the way, over all the way, all okay. the way. Okay. Pop, you stay right there. You I can't don't think fool she me. did that much of a serious Come on. crime. Think I'm right here? Okay. Yeah. I think the last two should switch. I think he probably did the worst crime. She did the least worst crime. Mm. By appearance, that's just my opinion. She looks very like angelic, Sarah like killer. innocent to me, and he just looks more rugged, like he's willing to do something a little more dangerous. In she my did opinion. Time. See her hand tattoos? A, the, she's like that nurse that killed somebody, though. <laughs> you know, that killed him with the, the stuff. You think everybody killed somebody, <laughs> man? <laughs> when I was in prison, a lot of the dudes that were in there for serious crimes didn't look like they were yeah. in there for serious crimes. If they looked like like the typical dude you would see in an office, I was like, that's a sex offender. Oh. <laughs> I'd put you on like a bank fraud, forgery, burglary type of scenario. You've done time, but you've done lots of different uh, stretches of time. Nothing crazy all at once is my guess. Mm. Same. A lot of people who did like really serious crimes, they end up finding their zen in prison. And so they'll just be this like calm aura about them or they've done so much time that they don't readjust well to the world. And then you catch an air of like, you know, that PTSD, that anxiety oh, yeah. off people. And when people did a violent crime, that doesn't really tell you anything about their life, because that can be a five minute accident. But when people have drug crimes or identity theft, that's usually indicative of their lifestyle. I disagree. If you're, if you're apt to, vi to be violent, you're going to be violent. It's not like I snapped to kill the motherfucker. Mm. No, you know, it's in you to kill the motherfucker. I was in women's prison, so violence they is a They have crazy left. bitches in there, you know that. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's girls who killed their abusive boyfriends, right. though. Absolutely. I mean, that was most of the murders that I saw. There you go, right? Get over there. What? Man, they gotta <laughs> switch this shit. She said that. <laughs> 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 yeah, you get your feet in that vibe too. You, no, 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 no. You gotta go over here. This guy went down when he was young, and he's changed. He's not the same guy he was when he went down for something when he was 17, 18, 19. I see personal growth on this one, <laughs> which I think means you did something serious. Come down here. <laughs> <laughs> young lady right here should move over. You got the spider web on your elbow. You know, it's, 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 it's giving me them kind of cartel vibes. This guy here though, you might have done a lot of time, but I don't think it was for that serious of a crime. I get like 70s dope case off you, or maybe like environmental terrorism, or, or some of <laughs> like, you know, the radical stuff, the real radical stuff that was happening in the 70s. Cause I see that like political, 
edge to you maybe. So I would put you down at least to the right of the guy with the hat. Mm. Nah, he's got a lot of murders, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, he's a shot Trust caller. me, he's got a body. So we have our two women over here on the end of the most serious. Because women are like that. I mean, or they could be snakes, they could be tough. And they'll shank if they have to. I mean, they'll do what they gotta do. And listen, bitches are bitches, man. This gentleman over here has had some bad experiences with women. <laughs> Clearly, he looks traumatized. <laughs> yes. Just about nothing he says about women aligns with my experience in prison, where almost everybody was there for less serious crimes. Killing their babies and stuff? Nah, man, they were fighting back, back against abusive oh, men. Oh, don't get in that conversation. Might be don't get in that conversation. What's going on over bullshit. here? They hit you first, and then they say, oh, man. He hit me, because he's a big, that bitch hits me, I thought I'd hit her like a man. You okay, know, proving like, my point right here. No, because <laughs> it's just about society. Listen, if a bitch slaps you, what are you supposed to do? Slap him back. Call Thank you, Pop, man, you in the old school. Listen, I'm not gonna abuse her. I never hit a woman in my life. This gentleman over here, he interrupts people a lot when they talk. <laughs> so he doesn't have that respect value that people, or, so there's, there's two ways this could go or you were high up on the food chain. So I think you did bids, 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 because you were never there long enough to get either that zen or you were, you were always getting in fights. You were on these short bids and you were always getting in fights because you run your mouth. I like this, keep going, <laughs> keep going, keep going. There's obviously more boisterous characters and usually from my experience, the louder they are, typically the less serious in crime, it's more of like a, their bravado and their, and, that's not my style. The dude with the Nike shirt on, I think he's secretly down here somewhere. That's my guess. Where I'm at. Where Bank I'm at. fraud dude is, is down yeah, here I as well. Yeah, I think he's up here a little bit more. I think, I think you're over here. Well, yeah, and I think you're okay. right here, actually. Yeah. I, it, the way that I rank drug offenses is on like the lowest scale. Uh, I just don't even think it should be illegal. So I still think this guy is has dealt with some addiction issues and went to prison on that. I put Zane down towards the end because I think he was just on drugs and kept getting some dirty UAs and went to prison. What do people who have struggled with addiction look like? It's All a mix. It's a mix for sure. Everybody. Everybody struggles with something. So, and listen, addiction or whatever it is. You two are serious as well as this guy right Which here. Which of the serious? You're and up I there. think you're down here. No. That's my guess. Where? Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I would think say you're down. down. I'd yeah, say you're down. Yeah. down here I'd put somewhere. you here. Right here. I, I think you two are, have done serious time, especially you've never, you haven't said a whole lot, and I know you, you probably did something serious, is my guess, because you just handle yourself. Yeah, a little yeah, I object, better. but that's at the end. Bank fraud and and uh, and you, I think that could be yeah. a switch. But I, I know you don't. You, I think you're in that somewhat serious range. I think he needs to come here. I'm next to you. Okay. And I think that'll lock it in. Nope. Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> We're gonna lock this appearance right here. Um, I was charged with misdemeanor DUI with injury. I was charged with delivery of heroin, conspiracy to distribute heroin, and drug delivery resulting in death. I was charged with burglary of a dwelling and theft. I was charged with organized fraud and grand theft. I was charged uh, with the RICO for armed robberies and more. I was charged with conspiracy to traffic, trafficking, and RICO for cannabis. I was charged with aggravated assault, attempted murder on a witness, murder, uh, conspiracy, and gun charge. Okay. Uh, you got to go, Pop, least serious. Come you got to go down to the switch end. He's got to go all switch the way to the her. end. She's got to go Pop. up there. I think she should go second because yeah. her crime injured someone. I think you should go third. <clears throat> My personal thought is, this was an accident. Dude gets high or drunk, crashes, it results in an injury, which sucks. It's, and it's not a, an intent behind that. He, he wishes that day didn't happen. You'd but made that's, a choice. That's what I'm saying, that's least serious. You made it, exactly. So, so you gotta get back I here. I think you're back yeah, over here. You I think you, here. personally, if you take a gun or a weapon and try to rob someone, no, armed no, robbery no, is yeah, serious. That's, serious. that's like you, you that's make the wrong move and dude's dead. So I think yours is a lot more thought out, bad idea. I think I'd put you over uh, her heroin. Heroin. Yeah, heroin, in my opinion, heroin's not a big deal. So I'm with, I'm personally, I'm like, okay, drug people, you're down here. 
I think what the intent, that is what criminal law should be based on, willful behavior. Accidents, that's a different thing. Because you didn't like get behind the wheel of a car and said, today's the day I'm going to hurt someone. Right. But if you think about serious, this could be an accident, but it's a really serious accident and five people get killed. An accident of a truck driver slam and kill you. That's, that's serious. Right. Robbery, and what was right? yours? Yeah. Organized fraud. Oh, Organized fraud. fraud. You're going down there. You're, you're over after the guy in the black shirt. This is this is good right here. I still so fraud in my opinion is worse than yes, drugs. Yes, So yeah. this girl's got to come come in front of this girl. I'd agree with that. You still belong in the front, like all the way up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I died. still agree you, with that. You need to go to number one. For real? No, number two. Yeah, that, I yeah, agree with that. Because I wholeheartedly agree. You should not have been delivering Some, drugs. Okay, but what about all the times that I overdosed, but you someone was there the to Narcan me? Okay, so then you just admitted that my choice to use drugs was my choice. Right. It, it is a choice. And therefore, my responsibility. I understand. My mother died of a drug overdose too. Hey, she shouldn't have been doing drugs. I think that your crime is terrible. Like, you shouldn't have been selling drugs. So I think you belong in number two. So you think, you think drugs are a serious crime? I do. Okay, that, that's just a matter of how we grade seriousness. Drugs to me is not serious, so I think opposite. Same. Robberies, uh, guns, murders, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff little bit hard that's serious her yeah, choices fine. killed Me, someone no I, when a, autonomous adults consent to the risk in the behavior they are engaging in and under that I would actually be less serious than him because the person he hit did not consent to the risk they were out walking or driving their car they weren't engaging in a dangerous behavior with you 100%. And fraud, that's way worse than. Yeah, it is. I'm willfully going switch. to get drugs. Yeah, I think this is switch. I don't agree with that. Yeah, yeah, agree with that. Yeah, you, you guys, the drugs are just drugs. I don't I don't agree agree with Every yeah. drug should be legal. Yeah. I don't care about fentanyl, should be legal. If Every people, drug. If people could get choice. fentanyl from a pharmacy, they wouldn't die because right. they would be able to dose. Right. Fentanyl is in every hospital every single day. If people don't overdose and die from fentanyl in a hospital. Why is that? Because people know their dose. You can be precise. Mm. The issue, why? Why people die from drugs is drug prohibition. That's it. I know that. To me, it's not serious. It's a choice by everybody involved. Obvious, the guys who used violence in any one way or another, it's serious. So I think this is pretty looking good. So I would put all drug crimes as the least serious, then accidents of whatever kind, even if they resulted in injury or death, then willful behaviors that are like nonviolent that didn't hurt someone. Your like drug that. distribution wasn't willful? This is like, I mean, I don't think prostitution should be illegal because that is consenting. If it could be regulated, there wouldn't be abuses. There wouldn't be pimps. Right. Can't You're die right. for, having, for consenting right. to have sex, but okay. But it's a consensual transaction between adults. And but it's there the, is it's risk. But it's illegal. Are you saying that the criminal law as written in the United States is infallible and perfect? No. Because like being a lesbian could have got me sent to prison in previous decades. Cr law is, criminal law is a construct, a social construct. It varies by county line. How arbitrary is that? That the side of a county line you're standing on could be the difference between probation and 20 years. I'm agreeing. Anything time you got a choice to do what you want, but it's a choice. Everybody has choices, man. You gotta someday say, hey, fuck it, I fucked up. And change, if you wanna. If you don't wanna change, that's, that's your own business, you know? But you can do that, is what I'm getting at. When I was a kid, I was, you know, a little street dealer. I moved up and uh, I wound up moving to Florida and it was closer to Columbia and Jamaica. My main thing was to figure out how to get cannabis from there to here. And um, I wound up, you know, doing, doing a couple little um, airplane deals, then big boats, and then bigger airplanes. And it just wound up just getting completely out of hand, you know. It was nonstop for years and years. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of cannabis, actually. And then, uh, you know, I got, I got arrested. I actually, I went away for a couple of years and got out and then got arrested again. I was set up by a friend of mine. He uh, had owed me some money for an airplane that he had stolen from me and crashed. And uh, that's how he, he put it together with me to, to get me into doing it. Cause I told him like four or five times, no, I don't want to do that. No, 
you know, I'm done with that. Three years in prison was enough for me, you know. He kept hounding and hounding at me, and I wound up borrowing some money from some people that I shouldn't have. And uh, when they wanted it back, that's when he, he got me to, to conspire with him. A reverse sting mm. is what they called it. You know, where the, where the police set you up. Mm. And that's when they had a hold of me real good. I made all my time in prison good. I didn't waste any time with anything that I did in there. I tried to stay positive all the time I was in there. I tried to help as many people as I could, you know, especially youngsters. And I would try to get them out of what they were doing. Um, so when I was 19, I had just gotten prescribed Xanax that day. Um, so I ended up taking 15 and um, I had gone to sleep and then woken up early in the morning to drop off my friend at his house. Um, when we pulled up to the first stoplight, I actually fell asleep. And he had woken me up and asked me like, if I wanted him to drive. And I told him, no, I'm good. I can drive, I'm perfectly fine. Um, probably no less than like a minute or two later, I was going down a hill and I hit a tree and flipped my car. Um, we were both not injured from the car accident, um, but he ended up getting an injury from kicking out my windshield. He had scratched up his entire leg, had to get stitches on his leg, and that's why it was an injury, with a DUI with injury. Um, so my best friend and I, we both got into OxyContin, and then they cracked down on OxyContin prescribing, so all of a sudden it was like $100 a pill, and people were scrambling and we switched to black tar heroin. Um, and, you know, it took a few years before I actually got like real bad in addiction. Like both he and I, we wanted a better life. Like we didn't want that, but addiction is hell, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and in that time, my friend Justin, he was going to jail and he got out. He was trying to do the recovery thing, but he just, couldn't manage it, so within a couple months, he relapsed, and he texted his drug dealer uh, to deliver him a gram, and on the way to deliver it, his drug dealer uh, got a flat tire, and he knew that I lived with the drug dealer, and so that night, he was gonna be dope sick, and he had to go to work in the morning, or else he's gonna violate his parole, and so he texts me, asking if I could middleman a gram, and I did. He came over to my apartment. I asked if he wanted to stay and hang out. And he said, no, no, I got to work in the morning. And uh, he left. And because he was right outside of Multnomah County on the Washington County line, he overdosed and died that night alone in his bedroom. And Washington County at that time was treating overdoses like murder. And so they raided my apartment the next day and charged me with drug delivery resulting in death for my best friend's death and against the wishes of his family who repeatedly tried to get them to drop the case. You know, they always say like, oh, but what about the victim? So in this case, his mom was listed as my victim and she's going to court opposing the prosecution and writing a letter on my behalf at sentencing but victims' voices only matter when they align with the punitive interests of the prosecution. So Justin was a criminal while he lived, jail, jail, prison, prison. And the first time he was ever treated as a victim was after he died. And then all of a sudden they had over a million dollars to prosecute and lock us up. But they didn't have money for treatment while he lived. Um, when I was 18, I was living on my own. I had a two-year-old daughter. And I was approached by my sister, and she told me that she had an opportunity for me to make some money. Um, I would get paid $10,000 for every 40,000 that I would withdraw from the bank. Um, I agreed, because I was naive. What I had to do was open up uh, a bank account, and in turn, she gave it to the people that she was working with. They added my information to a millionaire's account and they were transferring money from his account into my solo account. I found that out afterward. I didn't know how the money actually got in my account before this. And um, 
when we got there, I was instructed to, at the first bank, to take out um, less than $10,000 so that the red flags don't go up. There was two men and they were the drivers uh, driving me and my sister. I also had my two-year-old daughter with me. Um, at this point, I, did, I didn't even know I was committing a crime. Um, we made it to the sec uh, as soon as I left the bank, um, I gave the money to the guys. At the third bank, I go in and I go to the teller, I give her my ID and I gave her another slip to take out money. And um, I knew right away something was wrong. I saw her reach under the desk, which I'm guessing that's when she pressed the button and she alerted the police. Um, when the bank was swarmed with police officers, I automatically knew that it was for me, like I felt it. and. Um, I got on the phone, I called my sister right away, which she was right outside with the guys in the car, and um, they left. They left me at the bank. I was completely alone, two hours away from home, didn't know where I was at. I was 18 years old. Um, so that night I went to jail, and um, I had a $10,000 bond, and I was bonded out by the guys, but a couple days later, they were knocking at my door. Come to find out, they were trying to harm me because they thought that I had um, you know, like giving them away even though nobody else got arrested. I was the only one ever charged for the crime. It was a huge um, organized fraud ring. They had over 55 victims, one point something million dollars was stolen. And um, I, I was also a victim because I had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. I was just told to open up a bank account. So at the end, I was charged with organized fraud. It was a white collar crime and grand theft. Um. I started getting in trouble as a younger kid. Uh, nine years old was my first charge and they tried to take me to detention and it didn't work because you had to be 10. So from the time I hit 10 through 18, I did a decent little chunk here and there from detention. 16, I got put on state's custody. That's when I started doing drugs. So I broke my wrist snowboarding at 16 years old and got addicted to pain pills. So from 16, basically till 18 through high school, I was addicted to heroin and opiates. It was constant drug test. Kept getting dirty UAs. I couldn't stay clean and sober. It was just uh, unfamiliar for me. Strangely enough, I have a scar on my right arm, if you may be able to see it. I was one of the first people to get sentenced to get an opiate blocker installed in my arm. 19 years old, um, I robbed my drug dealer's house. Nothing was exciting in the safe, unfortunately, but that's, that's, that was the crime that I had committed, was burglary of a, of a dwelling and theft. And at 19 years old, they sentenced me to prison for burglary of a, dwell, bur burglary of a dwelling and theft, not, not the amount of time. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that, those were my original charges, but it was heavily uh, drug-related leading up to that. Oh, I started young. I started an organized crime at 12, uh, moved up, went to the service, then I got out, then I ended up uh, being the biggest jewel robber in the United States. Robbed 15, 18 million. Uh, I was hooked up with organized crime. So, but I, when I got arrested, I got arrested with helicopters. And it was fed because the state we had, I had the mayor in my pocket and we had the whole, the whole town who couldn't touch us. These were daytime robberies. These were, I would go into the store, I would tie everybody up. That was, you know, a professional. Knew who was coming, who was going, the cops were coming, to hold everything. The people we had, boom, team, take them down, boom, tag. We never gagged anyone because we don't want to murder anybody because if they puke, they, they die. So we didn't do that. So, if, you know, we got them in there. I mean, there's some, it was a robbery. I had dynamite and everything, but thank God we didn't use it because we were going to kidnap somebody. But we didn't because that's no statute of limitation on that crime. And then I, <laughs> even crazier, after that, I mean, I go away for not telling. So when I go away, while I'm in there, I get charged with another crime uh, for protecting somebody. And then after that, then, you know, got out, been all over. Whew, that conversation was so interesting. It reminds me of that unfortunate time that Billy ran his unicycle into an open pothole. <laughs> yeah, didn't he like dislocate both his arms and break his leg and even lose a tooth? <gasps> yeah, I'm so glad he recovered from that. He went through such a treacherous process trying to sue, and he barely even got compensated. It must have taken him like three to four months to get a lawyer. It was, it was horrible. Yeah, the sad part was his legal fees were comparable to his compensation. I mean, I'm sure there's a firm out there that does online appointments and all the paperwork for you and at no cost unless you win your case. You mean Morgan & Morgan? America's, America's largest, largest injury law firm? firm? 
Morgan & Morgan specializes in a wide range of different personal injury cases. And when you hire them, you don't just get a lawyer, they give you a dedicated legal team that does all the research and paperwork for you. That's right, Jules. They've recovered over 20 billion for their clients. Just in the past couple months, they saw verdicts of over 12 million in Florida. 26 million in Philly and 6.8 million in New York. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And guess what? They don't charge for any sign-up fees or any other upfront costs. It's all free unless you win your case. Submitting a claim has never been easier. Whoa, that was weird. If you've also been a victim of personal injury or any other serious accidents like our friend Billy, your case might be worth millions, and you're only a few clicks away from potentially changing your life. You can visit www.forthepeople.com jubilee to start your free claim today, or you can click the link in the description below. Thanks to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this portion of this episode. Uh, can we please get back to the video? Well, um, as a teenager, I got into the drug game early, about 15, 16 years old. You know, I lived in uh, with my mom. I had four sisters. I'm the only boy. Well, I watched my mom struggle all her life trying to take care of five kids by herself. So um, when I was in the streets hanging out, like the drug game was easy. We just stand on the corner hanging out. So I'm hanging out with them, but I ain't making no money. So I decided I'm gonna start hustling along with them. And then we started hustling, we started making money and we started getting good at it. And we just got more into the game from weed to, to syrup and cakes, cocaine, and then crack. You know, so with that came, a lot of altercations came, a lot of fights, a lot of arguments. Uh, a month after I got out of prison, I got locked up for a drug case. Uh, previously, then I bailed myself out. Then when my friends got murdered, when he got murdered, I didn't get no therapy for it, nothing like that. So I was kind of, you know, traumatized by it, and I was angry. I was hurt, and I had a mindset of that nobody else in my my friends would get killed or my family. So I was dealing with that kind of issue, and then we got into another issue with some other guys at a skating ring where we got into a shootout. I wound up killing one of the guys who was shooting at us, and. Um, I was on a run for like three weeks, and then I got locked up. And when I got locked up, I was charged with a slew of charges um, that they gave us the five charges. And then I was sent to jail at 19 years old. Okay, you wanna I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to switch his aim. Yeah, you got to. I'm just switch. Got to. That kind of looks good. Good. The car accident was just him being intoxicated. Just, just scratch on his, his friend leg, something that he kind of inflicted on himself trying to get out. So I don't think he was responsible for that, but he got charged for it. I could make the argument with these two still because there was a death involved. You kind of knew something was fishy, obviously. Mm -hmm. Nobody just gives people 10 grand. <laughs> and yours was not willfully like, hey, I want to hurt my best friend. Obviously, no, but the result was your best mm -hmm. friend died. I would actually switch these two down here because the guy you shot was just as likely to have shot you. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't enough money to come into your community and alleviate poverty, but there was enough money to put you in prison for I don't know how long. So there's unlimited funds to lock people up, but not enough funds to lift people up. Mm -hmm. But just like whether you were the victim or the perpetrator that day was a coin toss. Mm -hmm. This gentleman traumatized I don't know how many people for the for the life, especially in these particular circumstances where that the, the guy you killed was sort of consenting to the risk, he was shooting at you, right? Mm -hmm. I would put you at the front. Interesting argument. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree because it was self-defense and he tied people up and that that is traumatizing. You know, I didn't hurt anybody though, Robert. <laughs> you you did. It's our no. opinion. No, it's no, our no, opinion. It's, I, listen, you did. I, I get it. I get it. Listen, it's, that's traumatizing. You probably gave someone PTSD. hundred percent, I did. hundred percent, I did. So what is that? How well, many I people tried. is that? But you, know, you got no, I tried over hundred people. But the okay, uh, go back. Just just go back. Just go, the, just go back. Just, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I didn't rob old people. I protected old people. I listen. Although what I did was wrong. Mm -hmm. There is a code I lived by. I never hurt somebody unless they were in my business. Mm. If you were in the drug business or you were in the loan chalking business, the bookmaking business, then you know, you're fair game. Or if they were in the jewelry store. Well, those jewelry stores <laughs> didn't pay protection. There's a whole thing. No. Your mom is a whole different animal how we work. Because they weren't in. I'm not saying right. Again, I changed my life. I don't think you're life, taking responsibilities so. for your actions. <laughs> Especially if they stay in the jewelry business and now every day when they go to work in the PTSD. profession that they've had for their entire life, they're going to think, is today the day? Is today the day? Listen, they so couldn't get one person to come testify against that, me. Not one. You know why? Because they were scared. No. You were in the mob, no, bro. No, listen. You, you're not. You're wrong. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. And I mean this. They said 
He's a nice guy. I rob a store in Sarasota, Florida. Great store. Boom. Old people come in. I put them down nicely. I tie. I didn't even tie them up. You tie oh them no, 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 no. I was. Uh, <laughs> Listen, come down nice. I had I had the two people in the store tied up. He made a nice bow. The girl, yeah. the, I, I used to do it in a suit and all. They buzz. Oh, here's people. I'm already robbing it. We went in, took them down. I let them in. I opened my jacket. I said, "You're in a robbery." The old lady goes, "I go, no, 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 no. You come with me." I put them in a chair. I put another. No, no, no trauma. I no said trauma, to him, no "Listen to me. Listen, dog. Listen." I said to him, "I said." Don't do anything. Give me five minutes and we're out of here. Just get up and call the police. She said, okay. In the newspaper the next day, it said, they were nice guys. They had a story she was until still they're traumatized. dead. But who? She was still traumatized. No, she, <laughs> why are you talking? See, there's where snowflakes do it. And I'm not calling it's okay. anybody snowflakes. It's snowflake. my opinion. Again, good. No, I agree. But we got to get tough. We got to get where you listen. Things happen to all of us. He had addiction issues. He turned around. He didn't fucking say, "Oh, oh me, I fuck it." I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna life. stop this shit. And you fucking change. I preach. I love people who change. I changed. Mm -hmm. When you're in, when you're in that criminal lifestyle, to you at that time, you thought you were being gentle with them. You were being nice. I didn't gag them. I didn't do this. They're living a regular people yeah. life. Mm -hmm. That is traumatizing. If you are a regular old couple Not cruising through the jewelry yeah. store looking for your new watch or whatever. Dude rolls up, hey, let me gently tie your ass up. That's pretty rough I, I for them. Not, I, you know I, what I mean? I, <laughs> like, <laughs> at the, that, their psyche yeah, at that point, it's, it's so rough. Nice, you know? <laughs> okay, but uh, you listen, I'm your... sure I tied up an asshole once and he deserves to be tied up. Okay, okay but you but opened th your jacket good... to flash guns? After? Just like, yeah. The, well, it was a BB gun. I never used a real oh, gun. They didn't know that, though. Right, but yeah, right. they didn't There's know. trauma. But I, think I don't <laughs> use guns because they get a lot of trauma. You have a strict moral code so that you can sleep at night, but it's, it's within the mindset of cr like the criminal lifestyle. Exactly. Like, you're right, you traumatize them less than you could have, and that's good, <laughs> but, but you, <laughs> you did hurt them. I think you're justifying it so that you can be at peace with yes. yourself, and although you've changed, I still feel like that's traumatizing to people. But we live in a, a fluent, crazy, violent world. No, but most people uh, don't, man. Most yes, they don't. do. I, I don't most people no. do. No. <laughs> most people do. Listen, you said you had the mayor in your pocket. I can infer from that a lot of things about your connections and your power in that city at that time, which would maybe deter people from wanting to testify. I get what you're 100% right, but when you have parties in cities and you take care of the city and the people there, the poor people, never paid for a thing. We, I did things for that town. Now, to this day, there's pictures and they talk about because I help families with kids, give them sneakers, do you know, a lot of good. People just think of crime as, oh, that guy, you know, he's throw him away. But you know, there's a lot of economy in crime. But they say the ends don't justify the means. You're number one. Humanity. <laughs> <laughs> I personally don't think that Larry takes responsibility for his actions. I think he just thinks that it was just nothing. So I feel like if, if it presented itself, he's probably likely to reoffend, in my opinion. Seriously, I gotta switch with him. No, you're number one, no, you're number one. Yeah, yeah no, you're definitely, definitely, definitely at the front. Even though this was just cannabis, if you're at the level of like, Planes. <laughs> Planes and stuff. Like, that is stuff I've only seen in the movie Blow, man. Like, that is like Hollywood to me. And like, the level of profit you are making off that, that's some crime. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like, <laughs> that really crime. is like, you know, organized crime to the highest degree. So and you're so, to like the lowest power and he was to the highest degree on marijuana? I mean, he was making, I don't know. Did you say how much money you were making? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How much money were you making? Mm, a lot of money. <laughs> right. Lots of money. Right. I'm just thinking if his was more serious than yours, because you were how old? 18. When you're that young, it's so hard to conceive of like abstract consequences, which is what, like you had no idea how much time you were facing. Yeah. I see, it was more organized than mine. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, one takes a small army and one takes one person. So, so you were you doing it for a lot of years. My crime took one day, that's it. <laughs> that's it was what like, I'm saying. <laughs> but it would have took more than one day if you didn't get caught. Maybe, right? you maybe. You would have continued and continued. You're right, you're right, till maybe. Until you, you drained the account. 
How long was your organization? I don't know, 10, 12. Oh, yeah. I think it's it's I I, I, the way I think, the way I think, right, you, okay, right here. You're all right, pot, pot. The way I think about it is, you had the most serious crime, mm. all right. In self-defense. Especially when it comes to human life, mm. and it was an accident with what happened with you, but there was a human life involved, so you would be next to him. You know, as far well, as we'll, serious we'll, crimes, as far as serious stuff went down. You're still number one. <laughs> you're still, you're still number one. Oh, come on. <laughs> Nobody moved you. <laughs> trying to get out of it. But I just so profoundly disagree with that. You, I'm, I, you're using this framework of like human life, I that, only look that at, being the end all be all if there was a death, but circumstances matter. It kind of is the end all be all though, because so like, uh, you can recover from a financial disaster. You can recover from, you know, someone robbed me. You can't recover from death. So that's why there's a little right. bit more seriousness to yeah. that. Because they don't get a chance anymore. The day before, it could have been Justin middle manning me the gram and I overdosed for the 13th time. Okay, that is a coin flip mm -hmm. of a circumstance. But it was still, if they charge you, I'm not saying I believe in the charge at all. Nobody there has, you know, had people charged with losing a life, you did. Mm -hmm. So he's got a point that being up, up here, and you should go here. No, move up, move up, move up, move up. I think you, you should be on the end, and you should be here. I don't, like, I don't no, agree with that. I don't that. feel like self-defense should, should be the worst crime. I would definitely kill somebody if they're shooting at me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But, I would, yeah. but what I led care. up to him shooting at him? Like he's in that he's in that world. They're going after each other, so they know that, right? Okay, but the people he tied up weren't in that world. He needs to That's be why I'm up with front. You. I'm, no, I could I make the argument that dude's down here. He's up front, I would the say. The red is number red one, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 He tied up, he admitted to tying up over Do I have to move? That's pretty true. Do I have to move? I think Pops and um, Nike should 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 switch spots. Oh, me, me and Pop. No, not no, you. You're, no, you're, 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 you're good. You're good. <laughs> you're good right there. So Hi, Pop. you. He's good. All the way be uh, in front of. Wow, her. who put this in there? Yeah, who I mean, put my man well, over there? He's down with me. It's self defense. She's in my crew. What's the, oh. Yeah, switch. Uh, sir? They yeah. Think I did yeah, you can't serious. be more serious <laughs> but then i can wait no man you i can't be in front of, in front of you <laughs> yeah. yeah okay i mean this is debatable but again no he's he's totally on the other end of this man <laughs> you got he had no life lost i feel like that, that looks that, good that's just we, the same. we don't know that pop go down there man <laughs> Where? go down to right right after the guy black no the dui right. oh no no the girl Come on, she knew more than she said. Go to the back. <laughs> she knew more than You go to the back. Said. She knew more. You don't like <laughs> me. You're not getting 10 it's grand okay. out of 40. He had a 10-year organization flying planes and drugs into another country. Is serious? Are you serious? <laughs> that is serious. Wait a minute. He's helping people. You are taking people's life savings. All what right. happens when they take the money out of the account? Insurance. No, 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 no. Yeah. Not, in, all in, yeah, FDIC uh, yeah, not all yeah. the time. Yeah, FDIC insurance. Not all the time. Up to yes, 250K. He got his money back. That's but that's because he, he got that's, caught. Thank you to the FDIC. I also feel like you need to be up more just because, like, that's some pretty serious uh, criminal activity. <laughs> if you ask me, <laughs> even if it's just with weed. All right. So I put, I'd put you, like, right after her. Oh. After her? Or yeah. After her? Yeah, yeah, right there. Right here? Yeah, right there. We're done. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys sure this is your final ranking? Yes, yes. now. <laughs> <laughs>for DUI with injury, I was sentenced to two years uh, without a license, three months a of rehab, and three months of DUI classes. For burglary of a dwelling and theft, I was sentenced to zero to five years in state prison. Because of mitigating circumstances, I was pled down to conspiracy to distribute heroin and sentenced to five years. For organized fraud and grand theft, I was sentenced to six years in state prison. For murder in the third degree, I was sentenced to 15 to 30 years. 
for RICO, uh, organized crime, and uh, Hobbs Act robbery. I was sentenced to four 12-year sentences. I was charged with conspiracy to traffic, trafficking, and racketeering for cannabis, and I was sentenced to 98 years cannabis. On, a, on a reverse thing. Uh, I spent five days in jail. Between juvenile, detention, wilderness, foster care, all that stuff included, jail, detention, all that stuff. Um, the longest one-time stretch I did in prison was 18 months, but I've done roughly five years total. They sentenced me to 18 months contingent upon completion of the HOPE program, which was like a drug-related program. I completed that program, got out, and was still a drug addict. Picked up more charges after, and luckily they sent me to, uh, it's called drug court and that's where I found like Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. It's where I got long-term sobriety and went through a rehab program in Southern Utah and next month I'll have 15 years of sobriety. So that's, that's what it was all about. Uh, I served four and a half years. They gave me a much lower sentence. I was able to, to beat the drug delivery resulting in death uh, because the prosecutor said I did not meet the typical definition of a drug dealer. And again, because my uh, friend's mom was opposing the prosecution. They sort of dropped it to the minimum that they could without making it look like there was extreme sentencing disparities. Um, I served four and a half years. Um, I got out on probation, violated my probation. I got sent back and did around nine months. I was sentenced to 15 to 30 years, but I wound up getting 10 years suspended uh, for the conspiracy. Right. And I served 10 to 20 years. 10 years in prison, 10 years on the street. I ended up doing uh... Four twelves duty, you have to do the 12, because I, I lost good time. Uh, total, 14 and a half years, with 12 straight on the Fed bid. Man, my time in prison was pretty wild because I spent three years in the hole, over a year straight in the hole. I was abused, strapped down, naked, beaten, peed on uh, by guards, all documented, and uh, that's for all fighting the abuses of prison. Had a rough time, but I did quit, got my law degree, and now I, I help a lot of people. I've spent 32 God, calendars day for day before I got out. 32 years. 32 years. Maximum security prison. I'm the longest serving nonviolent inmate in the history of this country. They couldn't have gave me any more time. When they said that to me, I was like, I looked over at my, my lawyer and I said, uh, they're not serious, are they? He said, don't say a word about it. We'll get you back. It's an illegal sentence, da 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 Meanwhile, make a long story short, I spent 32 calendars. You feel like your crime matched your sentence? For me personally, I, I did do what I did. I take accountability for it. And I, I did 18 months, which at the time was a lifetime when I was 19 years old. But it, it, was, it was expected. That was the life I was living at the time. So it's like, I don't feel bad about the amount of time that I received for it. I felt it was somewhat fitting. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, I. I get where you do time, we all do time. I probably got away with more than, that, than I did. But you know, when you see pedophiles get very little time, I think that the sentencing disparities, I'm not saying that it was wrong, I deserve to be in prison, I'm one of them. But a lot of people did not deserve to do the time they did, or the length of time they did, obviously. So there's a lot of disparities there. So, but I, I gotta say, I did what I did. Uh, I think it was a, I got a great break from getting not time. getting that time or getting life in prison, you know, because I thought I would get life in prison because a few of my friends were getting life for lesser crimes, you know, or just having a conspiracy to a murder and they got life. Uh, as someone who struggled with addiction, for all those overdoses I had where Justin technically is the one who sold me the dope, even if it was just like middle manning, to think that if I would have died, he could have been charged with that, that makes me sick. But for my five-year sentence for what I was charged with, because that carries a 20-year mandatory minimum. Mm. And if I was black, I would still be in prison. So I cannot be mad about my five years when people all across this country are serving way longer sentences when they're charged with that. I'm really sick of burying my friends, you know? And it seems like right now, we wait for an overdose to occur so we can punish someone instead of preventing it because like we know what prevents overdoses and it's not sending people to prison but that's still like the go-to thing that the government is 
doing? It makes me mad that we can spend millions of dollars either putting you know, people in jail or prison for possession. My charge, which is users most often, it's not like kingpins like it was intended, it's just users and putting people in prison for 20 years. When if you think about it like that much money, if we invested that in treatment, in harm reduction, we could be saving lives. And we still have some of the highest crime rate out of any wealthy country we in the do. world. Not only do we have the highest crime rate, we have the highest prison and caution rate That's in right. rate per capita or not per capita, actual straight numbers. Most states are past most of these countries. Mm -hmm. States in the United States have more people incarcerated than these That's countries. Right. So we can go, and, and we know it's not working because our recidivism rate is high and our crime rates are high. So why don't we do it? And let's get to that. The big grand Congress won't pass a law. They're all making money, private prisons. It's a big thing. How many jobs are involved? It's all a bunch of bullshit. I think, you know, for the time that I, that I done for the crime, it was, the time was ridiculous. They have Absolutely. to make adjustments in this yeah, country. Uh, There's no doubt about it. It's, it's, it's out of control. And there's, and there's so many people still in prison, you know, for, for the crime that I, that I was in prison for, for a nonviolent sure. cannabis charge. There's over 50,000 people in prison right now that need to come home. When they told me 98 years, I said, you got to be kidding me. For a nonviolent cannabis charge? Something that doesn't hurt people, it only makes them feel better. If they got a pain in their foot or they got a headache or they want to just relax, it's really quite incredible. Can you talk about how you got out early? The last Prisoners Project found out about me through my, my daughter and my son and my nephew. Uh, they got in touch with me and, and within two months I was home. Wow. And I was facing the rest of my life in prison. The bottom line is they let me out. Mm -hmm. because they were afraid of what would happen because the media got a hold of it. All, all, the, all the politicians were already getting in line to see how they could get their, their, their hands in it. And that's, that's more or less, they didn't want the media on them. Mm -hmm. That's how fast it happened. I mean, it was like, I was, you got to be kidding, I'm going home. What are you doing now? Uh, now I'm in the cannabis business in, uh, in the state of Florida. Cannabis, uh, buds and... Um, pre-rolls. I'm looking to, um, you know, I'm expanding as, as we're speaking right now. I've got like just a, <clears throat> um, just a thought, I guess. It's, I've been out of prison for 17 years now. I, it feels like it was yesterday. I called my dad the other day. I'm like, I've been out for 17 years. It's crazy. I went when I was 19. My life today, the people that know me today, they would have no clue if they watch this and they're like, what? My, my solar guy is a prisoner? What the, f like no way. So like people can change, things get different. My life today is significantly different than what it was back in the, you know, when I was actively involved in criminal behavior. But yeah, it's life gets better. Life, you, you just, you can, you, everyone can make that change. So that's kind of the, the message I want to throw out. This was a super, super, Hey, this was a super thing today. This was special. I'll put this on one of my things, one of my, one of, on my list, that this was one of the special things I've done since I've been home. I don't know if you guys knew this. I had not a clue what was going on. I said, rankings? What's rankings? 